Welcome back to my Vanguard portfolio update now for the month of May. We'll go around the world, have a look at what's going on in the global stock markets before we jump live into my portfolio. I think it's fair to say that quite a lot has happened in the last month and it wouldn't really be anywhere else to start apart from the latest meme stock rally, which seemingly is back in the stock market. It's official, folks. The stock market is back in crazy meme stock territory. You would have seen this all started off from a tweet from the legendary trader Roaring Kitty over on X, goes by the name of Keith Gill. Now he posted this, which I'll show you on screen now. Seemingly a photo of someone on a chair, leaning forward, hence maybe looking to pay attention to what's going on in the stock market. Now, whatever's happened, that has sent some of the meme stocks, which are heavily shorted on the stock market to new crazy highs in the market. I'll just show you up on screen now from the likes of GameStop and AMC. For example, GameStop is 200% up over the last few days and also up pre-market as I film this video. Now, anything can change by the time this goes live on YouTube. Similar with AMC, it's up 117% over the past five days and also up pre-market. Now, this has kind of spurred a bit of a wider rally in the global stock markets. And also, if you have a look at some many other names in the stock market, which people and different investors have shorted, betting that their stock market will go lower, lots of retail investors over on Wall Street bets have kind of led that and thought, right, we'd better pump the stock and go along with this meme stock rally. So things are pretty crazy in the market at the moment, everyone. Just hold on to your seats and don't get too carried away. Now, whether this will be as crazy as 2021's meme stock rally, who knows? But certainly it's amazing just to see how much money is sat around on the sidelines ready to be pumped into these big names and cause a lot of pain for these professional money managers who insist on shorting the market. Now, just generally on the wider market, this kind of meme stock rally has kind of also added on to the rest of the rally across the wider stock market. Have a look here at the NASDAQ, also trading under the ticker symbol QQQ, closing in at a new all-time high. The S&P 500 not too far behind. Have a look now, this is up for the month at 3.65%. Now, as I'm putting this video together, we are expecting out from the US the latest consumer price index data, which should potentially show inflation calming down. Now, investors are a little bit hesitant at the moment whether this is gonna be the case. As you know, if it does come in slightly softer, then those rates set by the Federal Reserve should come lower as we approach the kind of summer months and go into autumn and winter. However, if inflation remains hot and remains sticky, then good old Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will have to keep those rates higher for longer, which he did signal would be the case in a chat he was doing here over in Amsterdam this week. It's always worth reminding ourselves why the stock market is trying to price this in. As you know, with lower interest rates, effectively the price of money is lower. And that's both for you as a consumer and also for businesses. So businesses can take out loans at lower interest rates to invest in their business to hopefully lead them to grow. And then you as a consumer can also do the same, whether that's through mortgages, through the housing market, whether that's buying a new car or just generally going into debt and other consumer loans and those sort of things, all feeding that back really into the economy. And as investors and traders, lots of people are trying to get ahead of that. So generally lower interest rates should mean higher equity prices, higher stock prices, and also don't forget feeds into the bond market too, because you, your rates for savers are gonna be less attractive. So it's always a careful balance to remember why these things happen. Also, it does go into the wider markets as well. There's a lot more going on than just interest rates, but they do play a really, really key role. Now, generally in other news for the month, you would have seen earnings seasons now pretty much wrapped up. And I think it's fair to say the Magnificent Seven and lots of other big names in the stock market pretty much came out unscathed and actually delivered better results than most people were expecting. Now this does tie us back to lots of people thinking that Magnificent Seven and other large tech, large cap stocks are overvalued. Well, their earnings so far have been keeping up with expectations. You've got very good cloud growth from the likes of Microsoft and AWS. And we've even now seen dividend payments from the likes of Meta and parent Google, Google's parent company Alphabet, I should say, finally delivering a dividend back to shareholders, which also sent their share prices to the moon effectively over the past month. Now do bear in mind these yields are extremely small, but they're just one way to get their enormous cash pile down and get that back to investors. At the end of the day, a dividend is just one small part of the total return of those stocks at the end of the day. Many people do see this as a positive move from these companies. Other people do think it's a bit of a sign that these bigger companies haven't really got anywhere else to grow and got so much money and nothing else to spend it on. So whatever that ends up being the case over the next few years, nobody knows, but it is interesting to see even a very small percentage given back to shareholders as dividends. Now, from a UK standpoint, normally I do skip over this, but actually over the past couple of months, the UK market has seen quite a bit of a rally. 
So for example, the FTSE 100 is at fresh all time highs at the moment. It's at close to 8,500 points. Now it's up 6.26% for the month, just on a price weighted level of return. That's not even including the dividends that it would have paid. Now, according to the FT from an article last week, showing here that the actual FTSE 100 has its longest winning streak in 15 months, and it's close to matching the performance of the NASDAQ 100, which is really something I never thought I'd be saying on this channel. Now, as I said on my update from my Invest Engine portfolio, and I think I may have mentioned it last month as well, partly the reason FTSE 100 rallies is because of the exchange rate from you know, UK pounds to US dollars. As the FTSE 100 is made up of companies who generate most of their wealth around 70% plus outside of the UK. So they generate that money in dollars. And as the exchange rate fluctuates, you can actually get more pounds for the dollars which are generated and vice versa. So as the pound falls, the US dollars and the weight of those US dollars go up, increasing the share price of those stocks. And the other way around, as the pound strengthens, you obviously get less for those profits which are generated outside of the UK. So that is part of it. It's not the only reason, but it is important to remember why that's happened. It's not necessarily a reflection, certainly, on the UK economy. And I don't think many people would agree that the UK economy is suddenly 10-15% better than it was just a couple of months ago. Now, one thing I wanted to look into just quickly this month on the FTSE 100, let me just pop up the screen now, as you can see here. Some other companies are actually making those gains in the FTSE 100. It's quite interesting to see. Now, I've just grabbed this from Hargreaves Lansdowne's website, and I've sorted it by the returns year to date so far, or the last year at least. Now, as you can see, Rolls-Royce here up on top. You've got Marks & Spencer had another great year. IHG Hotels, Sage, Barclays, and even Next. So I think you can say that lots of some kind of those consumer brands doing very, very well. Rolls-Royce, I know, is a popular one held by many investors who've kind of been riding that wave and saying that it should be going up for a long, long time. Now, what next for the UK market? I think with anything like this, when you see the market outperforming over a short period of time, I think a lot more people are probably going to start looking at UK stocks in a bit more depth. Now, this is going to come with it pros and cons because then people are going to find those bargains which are apparently out there and potentially also lift their stock price up, which will make them less attractive to investors. And you're going to kind of start that boom and bust cycle yet again. How well things go for the next year or two, I've got no idea. But it's just a reminder really that anything can happen in this market. I mean, who would have predicted that the FTSE 100 would be kind of outperforming the S&P 500 or the Nasdaq over a short time period? I mean, I certainly didn't, but good luck to all of you who invested heavily in UK stocks. Anyway, now time to dive into my actual Vanguard portfolio itself. So I'll put this up on screen and have a look how we're doing now. As you can see, the only thing actually in my account now, other than a very small amount left in my ISA, is my pension. So as you can see here, I only now have my self-invested personal pension on my Vanguard account. Now, the reason for this is many of you already will know, many regular viewers will know that I actually moved my ISA across over to my Invest Engine portfolio, which you can have a look at whenever you want, as I do share that one on a kind of monthly update as well. Now, I do have no idea why £11.38 was left in the ISA because the ISA was sold down to cash and then transferred over. But hey, not much I can do with that one. I might be able to either get the one out and move it, or for now, I'll just leave it anyway. So all that's invested, if you have a look here, of what actually the pension is invested in, as many regular viewers will know, I like to keep things very, very simple. All of my pensions, which are from previous workplaces, everything I have invested is inside a single fund, the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund accumulation version. Nice and simple, set and forget. And that's really exactly what I wanted when it comes to pensions, because there's nothing I can really do with this money. At least I can't withdraw it. I can make bad trading decisions, certainly, but this is for, you know, retirement in the late 50s, early 60s. So many, many decades of growth to go. So I wanted to have something which is nice and simple. Now plans for this one moving forward, you will see here, I have just actually contributed some money from my own limited company. Now I would actually like to do a bit more kind of contributions into this SIP as we move forward. As many people will know, if you kind of do run your own company, run your own business, there's no pension that you get unless you set one up yourself. So I actually want to make a bit more of an effort to contribute to my pension, as well as my ISA as kind of my priority that I do want to max out but I don't want to neglect my pension and make sure I take advantage of all of those great kind of tax benefits by doing so. So I have just made that investment today, sat in cash ready to be initiated into the same fund. Now, one of the things I just want to highlight again, I have brought this up a few times, but I don't think it's um, something that you can overemphasize is if you do have a SIP or an ISA on the Vanguard platform, don't forget that if you want to be a regular investor, say 100, 200 pounds, 500 pounds a month, whatever you can afford to invest as a regular investor, 
Don't forget that you may end up with spare cash if you choose to use ETFs rather than mutual funds. So let me just briefly explain. So just as a very quick example, if I choose a very popular ETF rather than a mutual fund, let me just show you what that would mean in practice. So if, for example, you could only invest £200 a month right now into the likes of VWRL, which is Vanguard's FTSE All World ETF, as you can see here, the issue you will have is that the market price of this ETF right now is £102.31. So if you invest £200, unfortunately, this means you're only going to be able to afford one share of this ETF, and then that will leave you what £97.69 left there to invest, unfortunately. So you should probably pay attention to this if you are a regular investor into Vanguard ETFs. Now, it's the same with the accumulation version, which is VWRP, as you can see here. Again, it's £101.88. It's kind of that awkward amount now. If you are investing in kind of £200 a month, that would be very annoying because you would be left here with quite a large chunk of cash ready to invest the next time. And then the difference with something like the FTSE Global All Cap, which I invest in, is a mutual fund. Now, the only real difference is that a mutual fund isn't traded on the stock market like ETF. So the price is just priced once a day and just bought directly from the provider. What you will see here is an NAV price, a net asset value price, but that isn't really relevant because it's not bought in shares. So if you put in 500 pounds to this fund, you will get exactly 500 pounds worth of this investment. Something really, really, really important to see. Um, how will you know if a fund is a mutual fund and how will you know if it's an ETF? In the title, firstly, you will see something called a use it's ETF, so it will tell you it's an ETF. Um, that's probably the easiest way to have a look, but you can also come down and double check inside the key fund facts as well to decide whether something is a mutual fund or an ETF. Also, another one which will give it away very quickly is, again, net asset value price. That's not something that an ETF is traded in. Uh, an ETF is just traded based on its share price effectively. It looks exactly like a stock. So do pay attention to that one because as I saw the fund go up in value over £100, this might catch a few of you out who are investing £100 or £200 a month. For example, if you're investing £100 a month, you wouldn't even get one share of the FTSE All World ETF, as you can see here. You'd have to wait until month two. And that means you're going to be out of the market for, for quite a long period of time. So do pay attention and be aware that. So what else? Let me just go into the performance tab. As always, if you go to investments, have a look at performance. I always do enjoy this one, as you can see now. You will see at the time here, now my graph kind of looks a bit skewed because of the money going out of my account. In total, I had my pension and my ISA, and now I just have my pension down here. So my graph looks like they, <laughs> I've performed terribly, um, but really that's because of the ISA moving out of the account. And as you can see now, if you have a look here at what's going on, you can see that the amount taken out from my ISA but actually it's kind of kept those cumulative returns, which is quite good. So relatively in the stock market, May has been a pretty good month, whereas April wasn't necessarily a great month for investors. But either way, I do say this quite a few times, as a long, long-term investor, really, I kind of, you know, in a weird way, I do want the market to not necessarily run away with itself because I have many, many years to invest. If anything, for you as a long-term investor, you kind of want, I guess, the market to do very little, really. So you can make sure you invest every single month as you get paid and get that money in there. And then it can kind of rocket away later on, hopefully. Because actually, if the market is constantly going up in the short term, it just means your buying prices are going to go up. Now, whether they go up or go down, I do not care. Now, you will see occasionally people in the comment section from my videos and other videos claiming that the market is at all time high. So they're, therefore, they're not investing. They're waiting for crashes. Well, good luck to those people trying to time the market, trying to time the market when to get in trying to time the market when to get out. I just don't understand where it stops. If you only invest when the market is off all time highs, then you're going to struggle because all time highs and new new highs created by the market happen all the time. They're just part of it. And if you say I'm only going to invest when the market dips 10% or 20%, I think you might struggle because then you've, you've got instances where the market drops 8%. Does that mean that you kind of chase a falling knife and dump all your money in there? And there's nothing to say that a market can't drop 30, 40% like it did across the global financial crashes and then the dot-com bubble as well. So if you do want to get into this kind of timing the market, you have to question and you have to get it right many, many, many multiple times. And I don't think I've got the headspace to do that over the next 20, 30 or 40 years. If I'm lucky enough to be investing, why would you even bother doing that? But I can very much see how easy it is to fall into that trap. 
And the moment you start trying to time things, as many, as much as every single professional investor, anyone worth listening to has told you not to time the market, people still do. But I guess I thank them really because they're the ones who help us, you know, index fund investors get the market returns because they keep trying to dive in and out and good luck to them. Anyway, as always, if you do want to get yourself started investing, don't forget, I do leave the links to the platforms and brokers that I use. There are free cash and free bonus offers available to all of you for either transferring your ISAs or starting a new account with the Stock and Shares ISA. I'll leave them link in the description below. And for another month, I'll leave you be. If you want to follow up any of my portfolio updates, don't forget you can check them all up here. And for the time being, I'll leave up the latest video for you to have a watch here. Thanks so much for watching. As always, happy investing.